All right, topic two. How are FAR subpart 8.4 and FAR 15 the same? All right, when it comes to planning, even with GSA schedules, uh, there is the, re- the FAR part seven uh, requirement for an acquisition plan still has to be put in place. In fact, literally, um, it states so in 7.102 that it no matter what the acquisition, you have to have a plan in place. And you know the, uh, the old adage, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And so written acquisition plans are required per your agency's policy. And many of those are actually based upon dollar thresholds as due to the com- uh, relevant to the complexity, if you will, of the acquisition plan. Uh, market research will drive planning decisions and the acquisition plans capture this information and it's a part of your contract file. So uh, whether a written plan is required or how formal the review and coordination needs to be will not depend on whether you're using a subpart 8.4 or part 15. While there are other streamlining opportunities available when using 8.4, which we're going to discuss later, cutting corners on planning is not one of them. When it comes to performance-based, uh, regardless of what procedure or contract vehicle you use, performance basing your services requirements is preferred over preparing a detailed specification full of how-tos. Establishing metrics for success uh, and setting up a workable monitoring system is a, ne- is a necessity under a multiple award schedule order as under a standalone contract vehicle such as FAR 15. Uh, these metrics and monitoring system and, and procedures are established and administered through what we would refer to as a QASP or Quality Assurance Surveillance Plan. All right, this little chart, if you will, uh, gives um, some element here of, of difference between the uh, subpart 8.4 and FAR 15 when it comes to competition. The FAR clearly gives uh, confirmation that a schedule order is in compliance with, uh, with CICA, the Competition and Contracting Act. And so you can, under either of these two methodologies, have a low price technically acceptable LPTA uh, requirement, or you can do trade-off and have a best value um, uh, consideration. And when we speak about it, because when your agency is using the schedules program, you're at the order level where you're ordering against an already established contract, schedules are already competed. They've met that requirement of SECA. And when you're issuing a solicitation under FAR 15, though, competition is strongly advised. And that, uh, and you have, and that's the preference that you would do when you're issuing that, uh, that FAR 15 solicitation. There is a fair opportunity requirement, uh, in association with, uh, FAR 15. 8.4, and we'll speak about that. If you have some limited sources that you're considering, there is the appropriation of a limited source justification document, and we'll speak about that in just a few moments. But under FAR 15, we're talking about um, if you're going to limit competition, uh, you would have to consider the use of a justification for other than full and open competition, which is uh, referred to by the acronym JOFOC. If you're within the Department of Defense, uh, it is normally referred to as a JNA. And in accordance with FAR 6.303, that's where the directions come about for a JOFOC or a JNA. And it also uh, lists in this part of FAR the content that's necessary to be in a, in a JOFOC or JNA. And you would only ever use a JOFOC or a JNA if you're taking an exception to CECA. And uh, there are seven of those that are also outlined in FAR at 6.3. All right, let's talk about some approval levels of and who are those levels and where the dollars break when you're talking about a limited source justification under the schedules program or the justification for other than full and open competition or JNA under FAR 15. And if you look at this, gra- at this slide and start from the bottom, 
If you go up to $650,000, the ordering activity contracting officer um, has the certification or writes the certification that justification is accurate and complete to the best of their knowledge and belief. And that's the level of authority. If you're exceeding $650,000, but you're under $12.5 million, then the approval of the uh, of the ordering activity competition advocate or head of the ordering activity or his designee above the grade of GS-15 or a military flag officer is appropriate. And when we speak to above the grade of a GS-15, we're speaking SES level. If you're exceeding 12.5 million, but you're under 62.5 million, and that would be 85.5 million for NASA, DOD, or the Coast Guard, the head of the ordering activity or his designee above the GS-15 grade or military flag officer is the approval level for the limited source justification or the JOFOC slash JA. All right. And then if you're exceeding those 62.5 million for all agencies other than NASA, uh, DOD, and the Coast Guard, which are at 85.5 million, the approval of the agency senior procurement executive is the appropriate level for, for the for those documents. All right, let's talk about uh, solicitation procedures. And uh, when we speak about that, of course, we are, we're sp talking about it for either products or services. And, you know, you may or may not uh, include a statement of work. And so while a Part 15 solicitation will normally include a statement of work or a performance work statement or a statement of objectives. All that is necessary is that the requirement be described in specific enough terms for offerors to develop their proposals. But under eight, subpart 8.4, there are already price lists available for products, services, tasks, and labor hours. So a solicitation often may not require uh, the formal statement of work. And in these cases, there are different procedures available to the contracting officer, which we will discuss shortly. Now, preparation time. Um, subpart 8.4 procedures are more simple, but the size and complexity of the requirement always has to be taken into account in providing for a response time uh, from those uh, contractors that desire to give you a response. And then the criteria, I would say that under both of the procedures, the criteria for award must be clearly stated and the contracting officer must allow uh, follow through on the criteria and procedures as stated in the solicitation. If any material changes are made after the solicitation is issued, an amendment to the solicitation must be issued and, and offers or quoters given an opportunity to respond. All right, evaluation of the award. I can't stress enough that when evaluating the, the quotes or the proposals that you would get from an 8.4 requirement or a FAR 15 requirement that you can, you evaluate based upon what was stated in your solicitation. And so in both of these procedures, the decisions made in the planning process should be reflected in the solicitation and evaluation must be in accordance with that solicitation as stated. In both procedures, the basic rules of impartiality and protection of proprietary information is, is um, to apply. In both procedures, follow, allow for clarifications and exchanges Although there are some differences, which we'll discuss shortly, um, between the quoter and offerors that, um, and the government. Un unlike the case with multiple award task orders under FAR 16.5, there are no restrictions on protest with subpart 8.4 orders. This means that you will still need to document your file carefully and be prepared to explain the logic of any of the decisions that you've made. All right, when it comes to management and administration, regardless of the contract vehicle used, you need to consider how to determine the product or service acceptable and uh, who will make that determination and how the contractor will be informed of any necessary corrections. Now, we spoke a few moments ago and I utilized the acronym QASP, a Quality Assurance Surveillance Plan, 
And for anything more complex than an order for commercial product that can be simply inspected for compliance, it is advisable to develop a plan for contract monitoring. And the QASP is a, is a methodology to do such. And delivery and invoicing and, and payment will be governed by the base basic contract as well as the task and delivery order in the case of subpart 8.4 order. A, a part 15 contract needs to specify everything within the contract itself. 